low volatility effect is a financial market anomaly that's been known since actually the mid-70s. Uh, at its very core is this anomaly where high-risk stocks actually have much lower return than the low-risk stocks. The reason behind that is really this behavioral desire for investors to gamble using the high beta, high risk stocks, therefore creating irrational excess returns for high beta stocks and therefore producing low returns for high risk stocks versus the lower risk stock. When we decided to bring this product to the marketplace, it's because there is now an increased awareness of this anomaly but also an increased awareness on the part of asset owners that the equity market can be very risky. Obviously, coming off of the global financial crisis, we realize if you can be invested in the equity market but not have to take that 20% volatility, that might be a more comfortable portfolio. So the low volatility product is a solution for investors who are looking to be fully participating in the equity market, but yet taking on a de-risking posture by eliminating the high-risk, high-beta stocks that anyways do not produce um, interesting and useful returns. If you examine the low volatility effect, and in, in fact there's a large body of literature examining that almost every 10 years, uh, there's a tremendous amount of persistency uh, in the data, and so that gives me some confidence that the low volatility effect will continue to be a key attribute of the financial market, but also if you just examine um, sort of basic investor psychology, a lot of these behavioral biases that's exhibited are just so part of the human nature that you can't teach that away. Um, you almost can't arbitrage that away. And so in that regard, uh, I'm very confident that this propensity for the average investor to gamble using uh, the stock market will persist. And the fact that these high beta stocks uh, that have poor returns, um, when you eliminate them, it creates way too much tracking error within the portfolio. And given how sensitive institutional investors are to high tracking error, the willingness uh, for managers to actually take the tracking error to arbitrage out that effect is also fairly low. So a combination of the difficulty to arbitrage out that effect with the persistency in investor behavior, uh, I think that together uh, will assure a high degree of persistence in this anomaly. Now, for a lot of the asset owners who um, are interested in de-risking their equity portfolio, uh, what we are offering in the FTSE RAFI uh, Low Volatility Index Series is an additional focus on capacity uh, investability, uh, and transactions costs. So in the FTSE RAFI low volatility design, similar to the FTSE RAFI strategies, there is a very, very dedicated focus in terms of capacity, making sure that you're investing in um, the higher capacity low volatility stocks, making sure that there's great amount of portfolio stability in terms of its country and industry and single name weight so that we minimize turnover. And the result of this is that investors can be invested in low volatility solutions and de-risk their equity portfolio without really experiencing the uh, higher turnover, the lower liquidity that is more characteristic of a generation one solution. And many asset owners uh, who have been looking uh, or have already invested in the low volatility uh, strategies, uh, they have noticed that valuation level for many of the low risk, low beta stocks have started to increase. And I think that brings up the question of uh, is the low volatility advantage going to persist given the higher valuation level? What we have done in the FTSE RAFI uh, low volatility index is to have a screen that eliminates the expense of low volatility stocks. And what you have as a result is a set of low volatility names that are still inexpensive and therefore that are more likely to generate the return that we have seen in the historical research and of course uh, still producing a low volatility risk profile. <music>